standard components, nuts and bolts. So today we'll look at nuts and bolts and we'll also look at when we are drawing these as part of a bigger assembly, what to look out for. So first just take a moment to look at the actual components. So a bolt is typically a component that has a hexagon face at the top, so six sides. So it's important to note that standard components has six sides at the top and then there's threading for the rest. Now some of the bolts can also have a piece that doesn't have threading and then the threading only starts after that. So this would be a typical bolt. A nut is smaller or smaller in terms of height and there's threading on the inside and what we typically do is we can thread the two together if they are the same size. If I have an uh, the M10 bolt and an M10 nut, the two will fit together like that. So these two can be used to fasten something. So as I screw them together, they can fasten something. Now, often we can also add a washer. So a washer is a thin metal piece like this. And I can often have that, for example, if there's a component in here, I have the washer between that component and the nut. And so this will press together. The washer then protects the component because as I tighten this, the grooves that I can potentially make on the bigger component is eliminated by adding this washer. So if something damages, it's just this small little washer piece and I can easily take this off and throw this washer piece away and it's a standard component that I can easily and cheaply replace. Okay, so that's how the actual components look. So let's see what we do when we are drawing them. So I'm going to recreate this drawing, but from the beginning, so you have an idea of what we look for when we are drawing these different parts. So first, let's first look at the parts that we have. We have, in this case, we have a set material piece. And inside this material piece, we we drill a hole. So we drill a hole into this material piece up to a certain depth and the drill bit has a pointy end, so a triangular pointy end at the bottom. So after I've drilled the hole that's what, that's what it would look like. Then I tap in threading. So I have a tool with which I can tap threading into it. And I don't do it all the way up to the level where I've actually drilled the hole, but the threading ends at a specific space. Now remember what, what is the threading? It's these zigzags. So we're not going to actually draw in each of these lines and draw in the zigzag. We only indicate threading by making these small double lines. So this is an indication that on the inside of this component there is threading. Okay. When I have the bolt on its own, for example the bolt that's shown in the example, we'll have the bolt head. It has a bit of a neck and then only the threading starts. So that's how typically a bolt looks like. This is not the bolt we have, the, the bolt here. This bolt immediately has threading, but sometimes there's a bit of a neck piece before we have the threading. So this is what the example bolt looks like. Now, when I'm bolting this into this hole, I have to pay close attention to how that will look. Now let's add a second part here. So we'll have a second component. And this component, I'm not going to add threading into it, but it, I am going to say that it's slightly bigger than the hole. So it's ending slightly wider than that initial threaded hole that I have. So this is the one component. And this is the other component. And I'm going to fix the two together by using this bolt. Now, when I put the bolt in here, of course I have the bolt head at the top. And that is pushing against the sides here. So that actually can't fall through. And it's important when you're drawing it that you don't draw the bolt head the same size as the hole. Otherwise it will just go straight through the hole. So there are points here where it's fixing against that top part of that component. Then we have the bolt neck. So say we have the neck piece here, and typically if you have dimensions you'll be able to see how deep this goes into um, 
the assembly. But let's just say for now the bolt neck goes in like this. There's a bit of a gap here because the bolt and this bottom threading is the same. So I'll have the bolt align with the bottom threading. This is a clearing for the top space. And here the threading aligns up between the hole that I initially had in the bottom part and the bolt threading. So these lines that you have here, they will all be erased. So you'll have your pencil and you can just erase those lines. Now at a certain point the bolt also ends. So the bolt only goes in a certain depth into this hole. And so what we have here basically is we have the bolt coming in this part and that's where the bolt ends. We have the original part that was tapped and it's this red part, so that's where that ends. And then we have the, the hole that we originally drilled. So there's three parts here that you have to remember when you're drawing. Now secondary, what's very important is when we hatch this. In a section where two things are threaded together, so the bolt is threaded into the outside component, we only section up to the outer line. Do you see these two lines? I'm only sectioning up to the outer line. But when there is nothing in the thread, like here at the bottom, it's only a clear opening and there's nothing inside that threaded part. I actually hatch through that double line. Okay, so up to the component, if there is threaded inside, and through those double lines, if there is nothing on that inside. Okay, so very important to take note of these. There are many mistakes to make here. First, make sure that you have that part that is protruding. If that is missing, it's a mistake. Make sure that you have the clearance space here. Make sure that when you're drawing these lines, that there's a place where the bolt ends, the threading ends, and the, the hole initially drilled ends. And make sure about your sectioning. If there's nothing in the thread, you go through that double line, and if there is something in the thread, you don't. Of course, a bolt is a circular component, so you'll also remember to add your center line, and you'll see that that is how this assembly looks. Okay, so that's why we have it as we have it indicated here. The same with the nut. In this case, we just have the nut at the bottom. And in this case, it's a stud, so there's a piece of the stud pushing outside of the nut. Another important thing here to remember is if we have, for example, the view where I'm looking at the top and I'm looking at the top stud, the stud has threading, which means when I'm drawing it in, I can see this three-quarter circle line on the inside. Okay, so on the inside means that the stud has threading that I can see here from the top.